What's your end game? No, for me, I feel that we've reached a pinnacle moment with the royal family where we are having conversations about the purpose, relevancy and future of the royal family. When we celebrated the life of the Queen, we also celebrated the fact that she upheld a certain set of morals, values, ethics and principles in that role. She was always above the fray. So for me to ask the question, do the current working royals all still uphold those same morals, values and ethics, not just in front of the cameras, but behind palace walls, I think is a legitimate question to ask. I want to work, live in a world and report in a world where we can scrutinize the royal family in the same way we do politicians. These are not celebrities just there to be written about in a fun way. Of course, there is a light and fluffy side of that story. But this is also an establishment at the heart of our country. And so to have more serious conversations about them, which I do in the book, I feel is absolutely important. Do you believe in the monarchy? I do, actually. Do you want the monarchy to exist? If you had read the book, you'll see that there are yeah, many aspects... I look forward to it. Uh, ...many aspects of the monarchy I appreciate and have been proud of, but there are also many moments, I feel, that don't represent the Britain that we should be in today. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so he's using now... He's changed a lot at, at this point because he's now using a pin-down-and-bite movement on the sofa. So it's like almost kind of biting down on the sofa there with his hand, because this is the point that I think he's stored up to make in order to place him, you know, very much in a potentially in a hero situation, Scott, which is morals, values and ethics. Anybody could say, actually, you know, was it was it morally, ethically and what are your values if you if you leak these these names? Uh, you know, you are maybe breaking some ethical codes, certainly some ethical codes by doing that. Well, he's coming back on that to say uh, monarchy is not uh, representative of of the British public in general, I think is his his theory here. And um, and he wants to be part of the conversation towards a more representative body, which we probably go is, OK, you, you, you want a Republican, a republic system, essentially not a constitutional monarchy, which is what Britain has uh, at, at the moment. So it's, it's, a, it's you know, he's come in now and he's now doing politics, I would say, essentially, and he's biting down uh, on that and taking the stage on that. What I love, what I love most about this is, uh, what was his name again? Is it Dylan? Craig, Craig, Craig Doyle. Because he says, well, if you if you would have read the book and Craig says, I look forward to it, I look forward to it. I, 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 I'm going to remember that for I mean, I hope I get to, to deliver a line like that at some point. That is that is etched in my memory as a brilliant riposte to that dig that that uh, Scobie puts in there brilliantly done brilliantly done that that for me that moment was worth the price of admission alone on this uh scott what do you got on this one i agree with you i think he's not gonna read that book anymore than we are <laughs> so that was just that was just a classic up years i think it was gosh and just totally just like it was nothing just said it and kept moving oof that was a good that was a good one you're right, i agree that's a good one I think this is really interesting because when he talks about what he thinks and what he wants and how he wants to report and the kind of world he wants when he's illustrating over there on the couch where he's hitting that illustrators, as we always talk about on here, are that's when your brain emphasizes specific words and phrases like I did just then specific words and phrases. And up to this point, pretty much he's been right here in front of himself, but he's keeping those arms in, which means he's sort of on guard as well because his brain, I don't think he feels safe there. He shouldn't because of the position he's in because the way she's looking at him, the way this guy's coming on hard to him. So I, so he's, he's a little bit, uh, he's on guard there. But when he starts, I think that's why I think this answer was given to him. He, he had somebody help create this answer for him, but he did it with him because he's he's doing he's illustrating on the couch. No reason to be illustrating on the couch. Why would he be doing that at that point? He had this really weird looking fish thing going on up here, pointing his hand and and those little things. But then he's way over here on the couch. So I don't think that was his. I don't think the, I, I think the main parts of that weren't parts that he came up with or wrote quote unquote, because he's a writer. And like I said before, man, he's, he, his answers are really good and clean. They're, 
the words he's used, everything gets right to the point. So it's really tough to do that. If you find somebody really smart, they can do that quite often. They'll, they'll just lay it right out in, in the perfect wording. And he does that almost too often in this, for me anyway. It makes me wonder, because I'm sure he's bright, but he doesn't look like the smartest guy in the world, not just because he doesn't look like it, but I don't know, some just tells me that he's not the smartest guy in the world. So that that's what I thought was really odd, and that's why I think somebody helped him with that answer. And then he says, uh, and you're right, Mark, when he says, uh, if you had read the book, I think I don't think that the guy is being is trying to be nice or anything. I think that was just his his way to 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 let him have it. And the the the, the woman interviewer, no change there. Everything's the same. She's when when she's talking, she didn't even look at him. And then she's her torso is still, you know, to the side a little bit. She's not even trying to engage with him. She's had it. She's got it figured out. She has it figured out. Greg, what do you got? I think this thing starts off with enough contempt from both parties to go around. You can't miss that rise in one side of the face on the part of the interviewer and on the part of Scobie. And he starts off, I think, Scott, the reason he's doing this on the side is he's making his point. And I would guess this is not a conflict friendly guy. Just looking at him, just paying attention. I've been in a lot of conflicts in my life and he doesn't strike me as a guy getting a lot of conflict with. He just not doesn't, doesn't play the part. So he's doing He's very clearly batoning with his head and likely his hands. We can't see his hands when he says purpose and future and relevancy. So he's starting off with this fourth wall where he's got something he wants to tell you and you're going to listen. He's free flowing. He's forthright. There's full disclosure. His whole soliloquy is going beautifully until he's asked, do you believe in the monarchy? Boom. You see those lips purse and then back. And he goes, actually, anytime somebody says actually, I go, hold on a minute. Did I ask you about actual? Let's just wait. I'm going to listen. Then he qualifies. He says, actually, many aspects. Then he goes on. I, As he does this, I think, he, like you said, Mark, he doesn't think the monarchy represents the UK. I would have leaned in and said, so wh what would you do differently? How did you fix that? And I would have forced him to answer some questions. Interestingly, I don't think I've ever heard of a monarchy that's representative. Just not how those governments work. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, and I, I think what he's doing is he's pulling what I call the strings of the people. He's talking about things that lots of people can agree on in kind of generalized terms. And this is a hostage negotiation tactic of the FBI. It's taught to suicide hotline operators. It's taught to all kinds of people. This is, I'm going to say a bunch of things that make you unconsciously agree over and over and over and get you to start mentally, even if you don't do it physically, mentally nodding your head as I'm talking. So he's, he's buying agreement by doing this. And as a behavior profiler, there's one thing that's seemingly, I think, more common now in the media. And this is how certain elements of a person's appearance, their hair, eyebrows, their wardrobe are just meticulously tailored to project an image of perfection. But I think it's this very pursuit of flawlessness uh, that I think can ironically render their persona as looking artificial as hell to, to normal people. So when, when these people speak, our response is instinctive and it's unconscious. We perceive their words and their emotions to be just as manufactured as everything about their appearance. And I think that's why a lot of people get this gut feeling, because everything is fake. So it's important to understand that this isn't about specific behavioral changes or patterns or anything. It's more subtle, and it's about an underlying feeling, like an intuition, uh, that something isn't really authentic here. And we're faced with a facade of perfection, and it's challenging to see past that to a, anything genuine underneath. And I think this creates a disconnect and maybe a sense of disbelief in all of us where we find ourselves maybe questioning not just what we see, but what we hear. And uh, in a lot of these scenarios, the more perfect the presentation is, the more we tend to doubt the sincerity of the person behind it. There's an idea of a person here, but it's more of a simulation of a person than an, uh, just a simulation of an ideal. There's not anything real or genuine whatsoever about this stuff that we're looking at here one of those tape replays what's your end game 
No, for me, I feel that we've reached a pinnacle moment with the royal family where we are having conversations about the purpose, relevancy and future of the royal family. When we celebrated the life of the Queen, we also celebrated the fact that she upheld a certain set of morals, values, ethics and principles in that role. She was always above the fray. So for me to ask the question, do the current working royals all still uphold those same morals, values and ethics, not just in front of the cameras, but behind palace walls, I think is a legitimate question to ask. I want to work, live in a world and report in a world where we can scrutinise the royal family in the same way we do politicians. These are not celebrities just there to be written about in a fun way. Of course, there is a light and fluffy side of that story. But this is also an establishment at the heart of our country. And so to have more serious conversations about them, which I do in the book, I feel is absolutely important. Do you believe in the monarchy? I do, actually. Do you want the monarchy to exist? And to if you had read the book, you'll see that there are yeah, many aspects... I look forward to it. Uh, ...many aspects of the monarchy I appreciate and have been proud of, but there are also many moments, I feel, that don't represent the Britain that we should be in today. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.